IHMS. Welcome to IHMS, Hassan, Timzada, and Sabat. I'm really glad you guys can join us today. So the purpose of today's interview is to get to know um, you guys as Hadari youth uh, from Toronto, and just to get to know what your plan is for the future as Hadari youth in Toronto, um, what you want to accomplish, what you want to teach, um, how you plan to do those things. So uh, first, I want to say, Tim Zeta and Sabat, you guys look absolutely amazing. I love, I love the outfit. It's very appropriate. Hassan, yes, your uh, gay kofia, not your hat, <laughs> your gay kofia is, uh, is suitable for this um, interview. So I thank you guys for wearing that. So show of hands, do all of you speak gay Hassan, okay. Yeah. Sabat, you're a little hesitant, but that's okay. <laughs> That's okay. So, um, okay. So, um, Hassan, I'm going to start with you. Hassan, why don't you tell us um, why you feel it's important for you to get your message out here on IHMS? Um, I guess the main thing is just to build awareness within the youth in the diaspora. Okay. Um, because when it comes to preserving our culture, our language, and our traditions, um, it's, it's a lot of work. It's not something one person can do. So, by us being on IHMS and uh, you know getting our message across to the youth and that's diaspora it's something that we can get help with and maybe in the future build a dialogue with other people in that diaspora so that we can build better plans of how to preserve the culture so uh, why do you believe it's important to preserve culture well i guess this kind of goes back to when i first got involved in the community um one of the elders who is no longer with us, um, they shared a, uh, a machmacha with me. And basically what a machmacha is, it's, it's a hurry proverb, uh, which it goes, Ishad is a mandus, manam era, which basically means that an individual who doesn't have a direction has no use to his people, to himself, to, or to anyone else. Um, and what they mean by direction here is basically knowing where they're co- going and where they're coming from. You can only know where you're going when you know where, where you came from, right? So that's where it ties in with us knowing about our history, our culture, and where we come from, so that we have an idea of how to move forward in the future. That's very true. Now, um, Tim Zara and Sabat, like I mentioned earlier, you're both wearing um, one of the traditional clothing. So I see you have your siasa and your melfota and your muria. What, oh my God, what did he say it was called? Your muria what? Muria. Yeah. Oh, Maria, that's what it's called, Maria, which is the necklace that um, Sabat is wearing, right? So by you guys wearing that, why do you think it's important for you guys to showcase the culture and some of the traditional clothing? Um, either one of you can jump in. I think it's just that the culture is so beautiful and the clothing is so beautiful as well, too. These bright colors just kind of remind everybody of, the the beauty that we can find in our culture and it's also just that like it's i love having to wear these uh male fotas and all the different colors from green and red and blue pink like this and i just think it's a great way to highlight some of the um culture and as well to identify that these are the harari people that are wearing this type of attire and Tim Zara, what does it mean for you to wear something like this? So for me, I would say that it's important for us to wear our cultural clothing on our special occasions and to be proud of it because that's part of our identity as Harari people. Um, like there's so many different ethnic groups in Ethiopia and they all have their own like unique clothing. And um, something I've noticed is that the Harari clothing is it stands out in a group of, even in a group of, for example, like 83 different cultural clothing, like the first one to catch your eye will be like the hurry cultural attire. And 
for the, it's something that identifies gays to people from a mile away. Um, even if you don't even know too much about Ethiopians, um, you'll be able to identify Harry's based off their clothing. So for that reason, it's something that we should be proud of and we should um, wear confidently during our festivities and I'm happy to be wearing this here today. Good for you. That's awesome. So speaking of clothing, like, you know, um, during weddings, we have different cultural, cultural things that we do. And one of them is to dress the way you two are dressed. And the same thing with Hassan for the males, they wear the gay kofia. So um, as you guys know, um, the Harari wedding tradition or the process is not just one day. I got married in Ethiopia and I went through the entire process. This was back in 2008. <laughs> and um, it was a very beautiful thing. But um, each different day or each different tradition has meaning to it. So as you know, now with um, the diaspora being so di diversified in the, uh, you know, in America and Canada and Australia and different parts of Europe, we're losing that. We're losing um, the ability to conduct these traditional wedding ceremonies for even my kids or even for my friends. Like if our, um, you know, Allah umri like, and if our mothers or our fathers pass on, then it's going to be very hard for us to continue this tradition. So when I actually got a chance to hear about what you guys are trying to do, and correct me if I'm wrong, and anyone can jump in, um, you guys are actually trying to learn how to do the different traditional um, songs and um, activities that are done during um, weddings. And I'm very, very happy about that. It's very exciting. So why don't you guys, one of you guys can tell me why you wanted to do that and how you plan on doing that. I think what's so amazing about this is speaking to what Hassan was saying earlier about preserving the culture. I think with every generation, we can see that our culture is slowly dying. And with the youth in this generation, with myself here and Tim Zira and Hassan, we want to try to find a way to continue that culture and passing it down eventually to other people within our age groups and our youth and then eventually other generations down the line our kids and our kids kids inshallah and so really i think it is such an amazing opportunity to be able to learn ankan mahtab songs or balachu songs or even just nasheeds in general um myself with uh, tim zero we had uh, a bunch of girls around our age or so give or take a few years and we joined uh, together in this group with Akhasta Roda Abdurrahman and Akhasta Roda Yusuf, and they took time out of their day, out of their life, to help teach us some of these songs. And some of the thought songs that we were learning is um, Hafalu Hafalu, we learned um, Shailime Wadla, we learned a couple of Ankan Mahdab songs as well. And it was just an amazing time to be able to get together with these girls, learn some of the songs and even partake in a few uh, youth workshops that we had about learning how to make city um, and a few other things as well too. But I think it's just so important to be able to preserve the culture and keep it going because there's just so much history to learn. And it's, it's just really, really incredible to be able to contain and hold that piece of identity with you and uh, take it down and pass it on to different generations. Tim Zuri, you want to add to that? Sure. So for me, I would say my interest in learning more about our Ankar Mahatab songs and our just Hari's cultural songs in general started um, maybe about two years ago. Because um, before that, I would obviously attend Hari weddings, but and I would feel like the like the energy and all of that from the songs during the Ankar Mahatab, but I didn't really know the words in order to like sing along with it or the meanings of it. Um, but then two years ago, one of my closest friends was getting married, Amina, and um, I was a bridesmaid. So for her, um, like she made it a point and her mom made it a point that all us bridesmaids like get together and learn all the cultural songs. So we would like go over to her house and her mom would like sit us down and teach us all the lyrics. And we'd like practice in our spare time and like listen to the recordings that we made in our spare time just to have like everything down for the Ankar Mahtab and um through that process like I really gained an appreciation and like the songs just hit so much more different when you actually understand the words understand the meanings like you really see the beauty in the songs that we sing like at every bullet you 
Um, so it was from that point on that I wanted to learn more and be able to sing along, even just silently from my seat <laughs> at Bullet Choose When I Go. So when I first heard about this group that was um, created by Khassar Raud Abdurrahman and Khassar Raud Yusuf Sai called which was an amazing group of um, girls, like Sabat said, like at about in our age group that were all interested in um, learning more about our culture and learning more about our cultural songs. Um, so we started this last year and like every week we would get together at the community center, learn songs, practice, get together. And beyond that, it was also an opportunity for us to like get to know each other. Like for example, Sabah, I knew her, I, we knew of each other like a high, high kind of thing before, but through um, our participation in this group, like we got to know each other a lot better. And um, overall, it was just a really good experience for everyone involved. Okay, so I'm gonna get back to language preservation in just a minute. But I want to get to Hassan. Hassan, um, so Sabat and Tim Zitter were talking about how they had Khasarou de Yusuf Sai and Khasarou de Abdurrahman helping them um, learn all these Ankar Matab songs and traditional, um, traditional identities that we have. How about you? What have you been doing? I know that even the males have like, you know, Mawlud and they have Nasheed and stuff. So how have you been doing and um, how is that working out for you? Okay. Um, well, initially, um, I think it was Ikhisaro da Yusuf Sai and Ikhisaro da Abdurrahman who were kind of spearheading this, um, this group into learning the Hariyada songs for the women. Um, and in the meanwhile, I was called to help out as well within their um, initiative. And mostly my, my role within their, their practices was just to help them coordinate the words um, because a few of them, their 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 songs, both the men and the women sing like shit in the middle of yeah. um, So I would help them, you know, trying to find the solos for the for them to sing and how to coordinate the drumming uh, and stuff of that sort. Um, but in respect to what the guys do, when it comes to a hurry wedding, there's 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 got things that are specifically for men and specifically for women. Um, and a lot of the times, when we think hurry wedding and the men's role. We just think Mawlud, which is a very important aspect of the Hadri traditional wedding. Um, it's where we praise the Prophet and we remember the life of the Prophet and his birth. And the purpose of this is to kind of bring the blessings of the Prophet into the marriage of the newlyweds, right? Um, but what I wanted to say is that there's more than Mawlud to, in respect of what, to what the men do during the Hadri wedding, right? So we have our own songs that we sing as well, too like Bidda Zinabi and stuff of that sort, right? So I think in Amir's wedding, uh, while Kim Zura and the, and the bridesmaids were practicing the, uh, the, the women's songs, um, I was not a groomsman, but I was a part of the wedding. The guys would also practice the guys' songs that we performed as well. Um, but I think it's very important that if there are guys listening to this, it's important that we learn these songs as well because we're losing it, right? Um, I, I think my, most of my best friends are elderly men. <laughs> um, so a few years back I was, I was talking to one of them and he actually sat down and he was teaching me about you know the songs men sing during the Mo wedding um, other than the Mo uh, Zikris and he told me one song um, it, was very, it was very interesting because he would tell me when it would be sung for the men so after uh, the wedding happened oftentimes like back home uh, people would be pushed to be married before sometimes they may be ready right so a guy would be told to get married and he doesn't really have that much income or, or a house or stuff of that sort. So what they would do is um, the men would get together and there was a specific song that would sing that, that would invoke Allah's mercy on him. So they would say things of the sort that oh, Allah make, make, make the rizq um, rain upon him and stuff of that sort, right? So where's that song nowadays like a lot of our generation from the guys i don't even know what the song's lyrics is but like you know stuff like that we need to search and kind of learn and pass it down to the next generation um so that's kind of the message i wanted to pass down in respect to what the men sing during the wedding well that's awesome i mean uh, go ahead uh, so about to want to say something i was just gonna say alhamdulillah we're very grateful for this opportunity and as Tim Zara mentioned, it started last year where we were learning to sing these songs. And I also remember as well too that 
their eventual dream or wish was that us girls would be the ones singing these Ankar Mahdab songs and these Balachu songs instead of the mothers that are currently doing it right now. Yes. And also as well too, um, I, I was learning how to do the uh, drums. Akhasta Roda uh, Abdurrahman is the one that taught me in those couple of days to learn how to practice hitting the karabu. Um, but it really stemmed from watching my own mother, um, Maria Suleiman, uh, learning how to, uh, she was the one usually that would be hitting the karabu for herself with the uh, women's association that she had in her group. And so coming from there, that's where my interest stemmed to be able to take on uh, hitting the karabu for some of these songs that we were learning last year. And we would have continued going on until this year, but unfortunately, because of COVID, it uh, put a halt to that. And so we would have loved to have performed for Eid, Eid Shawal, Shawal Eid, for Kuba as well, too. We would have hoped to have performed. Um, inshallah, things get better in the next couple of months, maybe for Eid Arafa we can perform. But if not, then um, this is definitely something that we all would love to continue coming together and learning and singing. Absolutely. And you know, this just goes back to everything. Like tradition is something that is passed on from generation to generation. And I always like living in Atlanta. Okay. I used to live in Toronto. I, I know Hassan very well and his family, um, Tim Zara and Sabat. You guys look very familiar to me, but you guys might've been a little young when I left Toronto in 2008 and moved to Atlanta. And the thing that I admire about some of the people here in Atlanta, like I'll take the Hispanic community. Um, for one, okay? There's a lot of Hispanics here in Atlanta. And f starting from the youngest babies, okay, to the teenagers, to the people in their early, they all speak their native tongue, okay? And I have four kids. And uh, my eldest son, Umar, when he was uh, a toddler uh, up until the age of five, before he started school, he used to speak uh, Gaysanan very, very well. And then, of course, with school and all that stuff, he's kind of being, giving us a hard time. He's nine now. And language preservation, because it ties back to all these things that you guys are learning, right? Because everything is done in Harari, right? It's, it's, in, it's in the native tongue. So why is it important for us to continue to learn the language and preserve the language? Because without that, we literally have nothing. Um, Tim Zara, you want to speak on that? Um, yeah, so like you said, it's like very important for us to keep our language up. And one place I really noticed that is like when I went back home to Ethiopia a few years ago, um, it was my first time going back, well, going period. And um, that's when basically if I couldn't speak Gaysanan, I'd have a very hard time communicating with a large portion of my family. And just through knowing that language, I was able to um, even just have like regular communication, like set aside, like passing things down, but even just saying like amantahu, like barahu, and so on. Um, and here, um, I guess it's again like the same way our clothes is part of our identity, our language is also part of our identity. And um, like, I'm very happy that my parents made an effort to teach that to me. And don't worry, Iman, like, I pretty sure the same thing happened with me where I probably spoke good gay Sina when I was little, I took a pause um, until maybe like the end of high school until I saw the benefit of it myself and then made a point to um, like just speak voluntarily at home instead of like my parents speaking to me in gay Sina and me responding in English. I made a point of, you know, responding more in gay Sudan. So I think your kids will be fine. <laughs> Inshallah, thank you. Makes me feel better. <laughs> so what are some of the benefits? Because I know, and I've heard you speak, and I, like I said, I know your family, you're, you and, you know, your twin brother, he has a twin brother, by the way. <laughs> you, you and your twin brother. Um, what are the benefits of actually knowing gay Sudan? How does that help us preserve our culture? Well, in many ways it will. Um, but before I get into that, I do want to mention that uh, Tim Zero, um, she's one of the individuals in our friend circle that's always pushing us to speak Gay Sinan within our friend circle. And <laughs> I do appreciate you for that. Good. Um, but the, one of the benefits of knowing our language and being able to speak it, um, it's important to our identity in many ways. Um, I believe in one of the events I attended, uh, we had some, a Hurry historian attend 
And uh, he started off his speech by saying, like, Gale Asase or Gale Hadda Nurze, Shifti Shinta. Right? So he goes, the first thing is Adeze, so our culture. The second thing is Tarikhze, which is our history. And the third thing is Sinanze, our language. So these three things is what makes Hadaris Hadaris. Right? Um, and without any of these three pillars, we're going to lose, we, we lose a major part of who we are. And I remember growing up, like, my dad really emphasized on this, right? So whenever I would walk up to him and ask for something in English, he would tell me, Ukumech. And he would continue to tell me, Ukumech, until, like, I finally find out how to say it in Gaysen to him. Then he goes, oh, you want that? It's over there. Um, so, so that's where, like, our language comes from, right? So how would we really learn these songs and understand what they mean and pass them down to the next generation if we don't know our own language, right? And if you look at almost all of the cultures that were close to being endangered, and they they managed to kind of you know come back and reestablish themselves, um, one of the biggest things they they struggled with is with their language. So when we're talking about Hebrew and the Jewish people, or a lot of the native uh, Aboriginals within America and Canada, um, you would find that a lot of the youth they struggle with their native and Aboriginal languages, right? And there's a lot of emphasis on knowing your language. Um, if we know our history and culture and we're standing around and speaking three times in each other in English, uh, what's to, what's, what is there to kind of differentiate us from one another? Um, so that's one of the main reasons why I think that knowing your language has, uh, is, is very important and it's one of the benefits of you know, preserving your identity and passing it down to, to the future generations. No, 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 quickly, I was just going to say how ironic we're talking about knowing our language and here we are four Hadi speaking in English. <laughs> so, it's fine, English is not a good thing, but it's not a or is that Arabic? Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, Sabat? Yes, so what I wanted to say earlier was... Gaysman, Gaysman, talking Gaysman. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say that, okay, Gaysman, okay. I can do it a little, I can understand a little. Okay. I'm not afraid to make mistakes because it's a good thing. Okay. So, I kind of just like, you know, I, I try my best in the, with my mom and my dad to tell them to speak Gaysanan to me because I really want to learn. Mm -hmm. so there's like a, a little bit that I understand and that I can speak. Okay. But I'll just okay, it's okay. But okay. Yeah, English Sanan, the AMG Ma, the rest of you. Hassan, I expect better from you. Tim Zara, I see that you know Gaysanan too. So <laughs> go ahead. Sabat is, it's okay. You can even speak in English. Go ahead. Okay, so um, I just quickly wanted to say that also speaking, being able to speak the language is an opportunity for us to communicate with elders, especially. Um, my grandma, Alayarhama, she would only speak Gaysanan. And my oldest sister, Nabila, she had the opportunity to learn the language from her. Um, I was still like very, very young, so I didn't really have much opportunity to be forced basically to, to learn the language from her. But um, I do try my best, at least with my parents, to try to speak Gaysanan. And um, you know, Ethiopians, East Africans, they speak several different languages. And so every time I'll be like, you know, <laughs> just speak only Gaysanan to us and don't speak all these other languages. But um, mostly it's just a great way to uh, be able to communicate with others, especially that are older than us, and then as well to communicate and, uh, with each other and uh, preserve it and pass it down. Okay, so Tim Zara, um, so the language of for example, social media hal. Social media live in tar the hokomo, video video bin it kada hal mo mukutin tayazo like um tarik kutbe morid le you need to preserve it somehow. <laughs> you know, so minint tasho bizal to help preserve this culture that you guys are learning. So a khaj dasha hulu khashinta da kin um 
Ilah hoji minasha minasha bin zinar now in the shah. So nash sati be ahadiam masabe community center be nessa matnar nama khasaro do you quote khasaro um you go zaru be yatib dun anaru so um sabazati kut nishidaj atli maduna ankar mahtab fakaraj atli maduna alai ada fakaraj atli maduna ye kullu um qalbi zu be zalit atli maduna like kutu ber nareyu aziyach um af be yimduna ma ahadusu um laptop e um yikatbanar zayo kut be okay Ma um azo kut yirozalu um as samat neo ma kulu sumle t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t شوال يد بقدر لي أم تسامت نما أم زفير سويك أدبي أم زتلي مد زل مدنيو عشنيو سو أخ حسن ها ممكن بنت زل مدخا قال بنت هامو من بنت عقو جيسنا زل مدخا أم قال بنت أستي زجنيو أوكي إذا هو من سلاسات يوم تجيسنا نكو من هذا أنا حسنك أم أقول هذا أوي تقولشوا زتنا أو سا جيسنا أنا مفرقنا the Bosho Tahwe at Medina. So Kunuma, Ingrisanam is a son in the Sabo, Ingrisanam be a Hashatim and a good Joab Yashimanara. Lawa, Gaysanam be Mukubi, the Nam Diva Nigabilanara. The Gregan Gaysanam is the Mendoza, or what a hard job to eat in Iranara. Which is very, which is very important. Like, uh, I think the Gadera she is like a wayach would actually be to go to pressure Moshe had been. Abzakara, Tabenta, Kadayukara, the Gafarosa, would that you mean that take up? You got to the hood. I think a large pressure that should be held would that you mean to push your initiative, Mr. Halbig. And that would be like Gay Sukar Samogram, Gay Suza Zikri Samogram. The Hanes, she gets an album with the Samosa, at least the Fahum to Kogazi to Koshi is either. Right? Aha, Gaysan Mamed. Garbage is the But in garbage is the It's not enough for me to express myself. But to the is the shah shah level. I think zikri must be better because zikri is the most that lie a is the most. You know, in Ashna Sana Zana was zikri in Ashna Zana. I had a most zikri that gets not better. But how do gets not better, right? Like I will say the gets not better. So zikri is the most common word in Gera. It is the most difficult to break. I can't even buy it. At any way, by Tita, you know, as a good Kalatever Nakada to go to Fahim's in a Zaida. And I think, like, one example I can give, like, Gaysana and Zikri was in a Matos. One, a lot of the times, like, I used to hear, uh, Allahu Rasul Sundut Amadeo, right? And what I know, Matmad is Nukazana, Kotsu, the Tamadasa, like, eat Alaru, like, Magaria Shadu, eat Kahanumeru, right? So when I used to hear that, it's like, Mukabeta Allahu Rasul Eat Amadeza, right? So Zilat Magidir is the type of Hussa, like Matmad Vaiti. It's one of the words in Gay Sanand, which is very interesting because it can mean that and it can also mean the exact opposite. Like Matmad can mean to love, right? And that's super interesting because context of the of Sazadu, right? Aha, Ahasu an Udazahnat Akagra, Tamat Hokba Bahogra, you would have Udazah Udahah Batin. Like in Zamuda Dinat Akagra, Tamat Hokobahogra. He knows the Khashanat, right? So it's, it's one of those like, it starts off at home, but like, you need to find secondary measures like Zikri Khanagram or Fakar Khanagram. And unfortunately, in our Zalnabi Wakti, Gaysanabi Kutubai Bajahatna, Zalana, a well Kitabash and Tayu, Ijibe Melhaz and Faraka, and the Zahagan Museums, the Zalmo, Alai Sanam, like Alai Khot Bezit Kataba. So kitab the bin at the day, like I think it's very important, like Gaysanan Mal Mati Khashizan Nainati, Gar we Yakima, Fakarwa Zakri Garabu Yahri. Fakar Lakusa quote unquote what you are about yet. Great. So Aksa Afahad Shi Ishtiho, Mininta Gizman Ho Yishu Malhadma Malit Ali Zahu Zahu Salika Khad Zahu Kut, 
خاطر ودلت على البات شباح من مذبح الخو خاخم تفرق هذا خو من المذبح الخي قدر سو عجبي لكن من انت جزم عن خو ذا خو سا لك من انت يو زرق او سا يوت خانو people in their 20s and their early 30s the خانو سا what message do you guys want them to get out of this to, to tell them why we need to stick together as a Haredi community because as you know relatively speaking and most of the diaspora so what is the message that you guys want to get out for everyone that's watching this Tim Zara Um, for me, I would say that um, my message would be that it's very possible to learn your culture and learn, um, for example, in the case of like the three of us, um, learn the cultural songs, the cultural degrees and all of that stuff. Um, even if you didn't know it from a young age, there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, like Ikhistach, Ayach, Awach, Zerach that are like willing to teach and they're willing to like spread all the information that they've like acquired all these years. And like, they're very happy if you approach them and you ask them for their help. Um, so like, in doing that, You, there's so much to be there's so much to learn and the thing is once you start learning a little bit um it gets you excited to learn more and more and more so what you you just really need like that first taste of it to get like deep into it so that i think um what i'd like to tell everyone is that it's never too late to learn the language to learn the culture and to understand it Um, surely as you get older, it may be harder to learn a newer language, but as long as, you know, the passion is there and the interest is there and you have the support um, and you're participating in zikris or nasheeds or you're finding opportunities to learn the language or the culture, then I think it's very possible that um, you can learn it. And it's such a beautiful culture. Um, it is dying and we need to be able to preserve it because there's just so much history that Um, and meaning and significance that comes with Haredis. And as you mentioned, we're very small, but even if we're small, you know, we can still have a very big voice and we can still be very big. And so I want to be able to just continue the um, Hari culture and I don't want it to die as well too. Um, so make sure that, you know, the youth especially, um, because The youth we are the future here so we need to be able to um hold ourselves accountable and be responsible for preserving the culture because if it doesn't start with us then 100 it is going to eventually die out in decades to come and i definitely don't want to see that so um participate take responsibility reach out find ways to learn the language learn the culture i definitely will be doing that as well so um and you know just don't be afraid to to make mistakes and don't be afraid to um, not to be, to start, start from nothing because um, there's definitely a lot of support and a lot of people that I'm sure are willing to want to help and activities for you to take part in. Hassan? Um, I guess the message I want to send across is yeah. just to have a unified vision um, and be able to preserve as much as we can in this, in this culture. Right now, it kind of feels like we're in a race um, because our elders are at a, at, they're at a very old age, right? So it kind of feels like a race where we're trying to you know, stay busy and trying to progress in our lives, um, but at the same time, make time to preserve whatever we can of our culture. Um, and that being said, like as I said earlier in, the, in this combo, is that if the more people that are involved and the more people that are motivated in this endeavor, the easier the, 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 tax, the task will be. Um, and I'm sure like Tim Zara and Sabat, you've guys, you've guys seen early on in HYC days, um, we hosted a lot of culture workshops with the, whether it was Syria and Boon or how, like Hattori calligraphy or Hattori emotes of that sort, right? Um, but I feel like we should do more with that, but in a way that we can document and pass it down to the future, future uh, generations. But to be able to do that, we just, we need more involvement and, you know, have a unified vision as a diaspora. 
Excellent. And I think all these, all the messages that you guys have said are very, very important. And I hope everyone's listening. But before we go, before we go, um, is, can Tim Zera or um, Sebet, I'll get to you, Hassan, in a minute. Can you guys um, maybe give us a snippet of what you guys learned? Something real quick, just something real quick. If you're willing, it's okay if you don't want to, but just so uh, we can kind of see what, what you, all their hard work. <laughs> I'm sure Khisrao the Yusufzai and Khisrao the Abdurrahman will be very proud. Just give us something if you, if, if you want. I mean, you don't have to, but I just, I just want to see if you guys can give us something. Which one do you want to do, Sarah? I think it would be really good if you did a, a drumming demonstration for us. Sorry, a what? A drumming demonstration? Oh, I, I, don't, I don't have a, a kind of with me in front. But I, would <laughs> I would say if anyone is interested, the videos are available on YouTube. So there you can see our past performance for Shawal Eid in Toronto in 2019. Um, we had our first performance. It was um, well received and we had a good time. Um, we were hoping to do the same thing for Eid and Shawal Eid and Arafa and also Kuba 2020 in Toronto this year. But unfortunately, we we're unable to do so. Uh, but inshallah, kirek adle kham nashana inshallah. But um, huruf of mat zashne or YouTube live we had the hash hash ko gear hejo. Link is all maybe you be nispahana. Yeah, you type in nispahana. That's fine. No, no, that's good. Honestly, I'm very, very proud of you guys. Seriously, I'm proud that you guys are even trying to come on IHMS, and you guys can ask any 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 elderly person that works for IHMS. They really need the youth voice. And for you guys to even want to come on, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I interviewed um, Nia, who's uh, one of the heads of the Toronto youth community. And, you know, it just makes me proud to know that, I don't know if I'm considered an elder, <laughs> but, but, you know, I used to live in Toronto and I was part of the, um, the youth committee there. And I'm, I'm super proud of how far you guys have come, seriously, like from coming from me. This is not something they told me to say. I'm very, very happy and proud of everything that you guys have accomplished and everything that you guys want to accomplish. And inshallah, dua shlapo, seriously. I'm going to make dua that everything that you want to preserve and um, showcase will come true. Um, an idea that you guys probably could have is um, if you guys can't have your meetings, um, you know, face to face because of COVID, have you guys thought about doing a, a Zoom chat so that you can meet with people and they can kind of show you how to do it? Because, you know, people are having Zoom concerts and they're having all kinds of stuff. So maybe you could use the technology that we have to even still meet up with your friends and talk about what, what you know, virtual events. People have virtual, you know, events all the time now. So um, maybe it's something you guys can look into because, you know, when you're doing something and you're on a roll, once things die down, it's hard to pick stuff up. So <laughs> it's hard to pick stuff up. So I, I really hope that um, you guys continue with this. I wish you all the best. Like I said, I'm very happy to, to know that uh, my flames have touched you guys. Um, I know that you guys are going to do great things. I really I look forward to seeing what you guys are doing because uh, my kids, my children who's all, who, are, who are nine and under, they're going to look up to you guys one day. And I, you know, I, I'm proud to be a part of this. I'm proud of you guys. And I really appreciate you guys coming on. Is there anything else you guys want to add on to this? Anything you guys want to say? Thank you so uh, much. Thank you for having us. Thank, you. thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Thank you for coming on. And um, you guys look lovely. Next time, maybe I'll wear my fiasa and my male fota. Hassan, you look handsome as well. Mashallah. <laughs> And um, thank you for coming, and uh, we'll have this up very soon. Okay, I'll send you guys okay. the link. Thank you for coming. Salam alaikum, everybody.
IHMS.